Okay, welcome back to the channel, and this is the Fluke versus the Fleur, the 1580 FC against the IM75, uh, both insulation multimeters. And this comparison was requested by my good YouTube buddy, the Electrician's Tool Channel. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. Um, I also had a request from Mathman to include some more of the range data on the instruments when I compare them, so I'll give that a go as well. Um, so if you've seen the other videos, you will have seen the kits that these come with. I'm just going to compare the two instruments, uh, not uh, the maintenance kits that, that are available for both of these uh, instruments. Uh, with the Fleur here, obviously the instrument, uh, you get a set of leads. These are uh, have the moulded probes on the end of the leads with the removable GS38 cap and on the end uh, it's a threaded adapter for the crop clips that also come with the kit and they screw on like so um, in comparison with the fluke you get a standard set of four millimeter sockets on the ends of the leads um, these will take crop clips that are supplied uh, like so which in comparison I think these are the dolphin ones flute to refer to them as they're pretty much the same jaw opening on the two of them perhaps a fraction more on the ones for the fleur here but obviously as I said standard four millimeter it means you can put other accessories on the leads if you want and you also get standard probes which come with them, which again with a removable GS38 cap that also has a 4mm adapter on the end as well. Um, I believe both sets of leads are silicon, so there's not much difference uh, between the leads in that respect. Yeah, I certainly feel uh, silicon. Um, and obviously, that's the downside too. The screw on variety that they take a little while to take on and off the leads as opposed to the standard four millimeter accessories for the fluke. Um, so we'll check those all out of the way. Uh, you get a flexible hanging strap with the fleur, got a magnet on the end and the velcro loop to go around the back of the meter. You don't get that with the fluke, although one is available as an optional accessory for the instrument. Um, that's pretty much it with the Fleur, apart from obviously the case, but you buy the case uh, as an extra with the Fleur instrument and you can either get the case just for the instrument or the combo case that I've got there that has space for the clamp meter as well or clamp adapter. Uh, with regard to the Fluke, uh, with extra you get a remote control probe for use with the insulation test function, slides in there and you can control the instrument via the probe here, again it has a removable cap um, you don't get a remote probe with a FLIR um, I don't believe it has the facility either so there isn't one available as an optional extra um, that's that one and also you get a, is this a T-type or is it, sorry it's a K-type thermocouple lead to go with fluke as this can also measure temperature which the fleur cannot do so you get that included with the fluke kit case wise um, you'll have seen yeah, spinning around you get the standard hard plastic case with a fluke um, pretty big case uh, lots of room available in it unlike the fleur where you can only get their instruments in their bespoke package you can chuck a fair bit in with the Fleur, including your iPad that the instrument will connect to. It sits in there and you can chuck all the leads on top. So plenty of room with the Fluke case, um, much more than with the Fleur. Uh, chuck all the leads out the way and we'll bring two instruments in together for a bit better comparison. Uh, can we get the glare off them? Okay, so there's the two instruments sat there. Um, construction wise, 
you have with the FLIR a completely solid meter, the rubber is molded onto the plastic case with the fluke, you've got the rubber boot that is removable on the back of the instruments, um, space for the hanging strap there and also to fit the probes in as a probe holder or either for the instrument in use or for storage, um, tilt bail and four screws to get into the battery compartment which is a triple A battery pack times six for this instrument. Um, in comparison, the fluke here, um, you also get the probe holders for the storage or for whilst they're in use. Uh, you get the slot for flukes, T-pack magnet strap, um, tilt battle there, and to get into the battery compartment on this, it's a single penny slot screw in there but you do have to take the instrument out of the cover and this is a four times double A battery pack on this so a bit more powerful battery pack on this in comparison to the FLIR unit there. Let's see if we get rid of all the glare on the screens. Functionality wise for the instruments as I said these are both insulation multimeters um, so first setting on the instrument all selected by the rotary function switch here on both of them as you've got uh, AC DC volts for the FLIR which is off this jack and the common and you have AC volts only on this function for the fluke you do have uh, a low input impedance option with the option button here on the fluke that you don't have with the FLIR here but with the FLIR you do have uh, VFD mode that you can utilize and also frequency um, which you do have you can select frequency off of the function button at the top there for the fluke and you also have a filter mode on this instrument that you don't have on the fluke okay um, to get to DC function on the fluke here that's a separate position on the function switch and on the uh, FLIR here you can just take it through the mode AC and DC to switch between the two. Range wise the FLIR is 100 millivolts to 1000 volts both AC and DC the fluke is 0.1 millivolts uh, AC and DC uh, but to get down to the millivolts you actually have to flick this round to the next function position uh, which is DC millivolts there only uh, and you also have the option to take it to the temperature range on this instrument when you're in the millivolt function and temperature wise it will read minus 40 degrees C to 537 degrees C uh, as I said earlier no temperature measurement capability on the FLIR here uh, next position on the FLIR is diode, continuity and capacitance for the 1587 here, that's, those two functions are split across two positions on the rotary switch. First position you've got the ohms and the capacitance and second one you've got the diode and the continuity capacitance on these two instruments. Uh, one microfarad to 10 millifarad on the FLIR one nanofarad to 9.9 millifarad on the fluke there so a bigger range available on the 1587 so resistance wise you have to move around to the next position on the FLIR that's combined with the continuity function resistance is split on the 1587 and you flick it around to get continuity and diode onto the next one for the fluke resistance range is 0.1 ohms to 50 mega ohms and for the FLIR it's 0.1 ohms to 40 kilo ohms however the FLIR does have a 200 milliamp test function for measuring earth bond continuity which is a requirement under the UK regs the FLUKE does not have that facility and so it loses out to the FLIR on that occasion um, in terms of earth bond wise that will only be 10 milli ohms to 40 ohms at 200 milliamp test current on the FLIR. Uh, you then move around next position 
is AC DC milliamps measurement on the fluke no current measurement capability directly with the FLIR unless you're using a current adapter so for the 1587 that is only a milliamp function uh, and that will measure from 0 0.01 milliamps to 400 milliamps and it is fuse protected with a 440 milliamp fuse on the input there. Final position on the rotary switch that's insulation uh, for the flow we differ slightly so each test voltage for the insulation test function is off a different rotary switch position for the fluke they are all off of the same position and you change it using the uh, range button up here which then becomes the test voltage function um, but they're all the same they've got 50 100 150 500 and a thousand volts uh, exactly the same on the instrument for the FLIR 50, 100, 250, 500 and 1kV range wise on the fluke here at 1000 volts you can go up to 2.2 giga ohms um, and at 500 volts that drops then down to 550 mega ohms on the FLIR at 1000 volts you can actually get up to 20 giga ohms reading and that drops down to 500 mega ohms at a 500 volt test voltage. Um, in terms of functionality for the insulation test, you have DAR and PI on both instruments uh, that can be selected using the menu buttons up here, and so totally comparable to one another uh, with that functionality. Both instruments do have Bluetooth capability. The FLIR will talk to the iPad. Um, I have actually checked and I do have the latest software loaded. Um, to be honest, direct connection to the iPad I don't find to be very useful. It's very, very limited. Just really screenshots uh, of the reading that's on there. For the Fluke, you do have um, Fluke Connect and you can record a DAR and a Pi test and get the plot out. You can make a little mini report out of that. And put some pictures in there of the motor that you've tested or cable or whatever it is that you've tested uh, and combine it with any of the other functions. Um, the FLIR just doesn't have that kind of capability in its software. I am hoping to get hold of another piece of software for this FLIR that might enhance its capabilities but that is in the process of being written so it's two to three months away from my understanding from the manufacturer. Um, what the FLIR can do of course is with MeterLink, which is another Bluetooth functionality, is connect to other FLIR instruments and also their thermography cameras and you can overlay readings captured from the IM75 onto the thermographic image. As far as I'm aware, you cannot do that with the Fluke Connect system at all. Um, so that's where the, the uniqueness of the Bluetooth capability of the FLIR comes into its own really. And that is pretty much all of the functionality of the instruments. Um, both of them have backlights. We'll see how well they display on uh, yeah, so the, the backlight is just disabled when you go into low battery. Um, we do need to put some more batteries in that. The FLIR is probably a better backlight in comparison to the Fluke, but they're both usable. Obviously, the only problem with backlights on this instrument, with it being a AAA battery pack, it starts to eat into battery life uh, quite rapidly. What you do also get with the FLIR is a torch. So if you've got your instrument set up and you're taking measurements in a panel somewhere that's a little bit on the dark side, um, you can uh, stick your probe in there like that, taking measurements, and you can turn the torch on. And you can see it lights up the probe there. Not particularly bright. Um, in the light but in the dark that's uh, it's not it's fairly usable uh, but as I say <laughs> the batteries drop down to one bar on this one now where you can see that uh, so yeah battery loft uh, it's, it's gone into alarm now so that's just uh, ruined the batteries on this one as well um, uh, I'll just pick back up now the lights off um, so yeah, battery uh, life on the FLIR is not the best 
in comparison to uh, something like the, the Fluke with the larger batteries in it. And that's pretty much the functionality of the two instruments covered. Uh, in terms of the overall accuracy, I'll put the plot up of the overall tests that I did. Uh, Fluke 1587FC comes out as 2.751% overall accuracy against the Fleur at 3.758. So 1% in it, not uh, a vast amount. Both instruments are probably capable for the vast majority of testing that I do really. Uh, where the, the Fluke tends to outperform the Fleur in that aspect is um, the output regulation of the insulation test function. Um, and I've just remembered from the insulation test function the Fluke has a smoothing facility as well for when you're getting uh, slightly erratic readings when you're doing dire and pi, probably pi more. Um, I always forget it because I've never really used it. I don't usually find it's much use for a 1000 volt tester that can only go up to 2.2 gig ohms but it does have that facility. The FLIR does not have that facility at all. Um, so back to the accuracy tests. Another aspect where the Fluke outperforms is on transducer tests, which is quite important to me. Having the current function on that is so much, much better than using the voltage function on the FLIR with a load resistor um, because the DC millivolts on this instrument uh, lacks a fair bit of resolution. Um, in comparison to a lot of other instruments and certainly in comparison to the current measurement capability of the 1587 there where the IM75 starts to get its own back in the accuracy states is with the 200 milliamp test current I'm testing the winding simulator with this instrument using that function uh, much better reading much more accurate much more resolution that is one aspect where the fluke does fail to perform uh, resistance readings on the winding simulator were quite a way out on this instrument in comparison to the others but overall the accuracy does go to the Fluke 1587 FC there uh, price wise so the instruments are actually pretty well price matched uh, in the UK if you're looking at recommended retail prices the Fleur is £735 but you have to pay another £60 for the case because they don't come together you have to buy them as individuals whereas Fluke does come in at £750 for the instrument including the case uh, both instruments include all the accessories that I showed for that price if you shop around you can get this Fluke down to around about £550 um, I can actually get this Fleur down to £490 and the case down to around about £50, which takes it just that little bit cheaper than the 1587FC, uh, around about £545 overall. In terms of preference for myself, um, for my particular work that I do as a general instrument, I would probably prefer the Fluke over the Fleur unit. Um, I'm not sure if the software that comes along may change my opinion of that, if that gives me more testing capabilities. Um, but really this FLIR, I use it predominantly for specific testing using the meter link function. Um, in terms of every other test, really to be honest, the, the Fluke will match the FLIR. Neither of the instruments um, are particularly good for insulation testing in terms of PI functionality. So although the FLIR offers uh, an extended testing range for the insulation function, that is only at 1000 volts when you drop it down to 500 volts. Both instruments are comparable and the vast majority of my testing will be done at 500 volts or below. It's usually only cables I'll test at 1000 volts. So the extended range that the FLIR offers against the Fluke has limited advantages uh, in comparison really. Yeah, so for me I would probably go down the route of the 1587 FC in, in preference to the FLIR IM75. Um, so that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. And I'll see you again in another video.